the pur okay. The purpose of this video here is basically just to go over the concealed carry laws in the state of Florida. Just in case some people are curious that maybe they live in Florida, maybe they're planning to uh, visit Florida and they're not exactly sure what the laws are for concealed carry of a firearm in the state of Florida. So basically I'm just gonna go over the pamphlet that I got when I got my concealed carry permit in the state of Florida just for information purposes for my viewers um, uh, the purpose of this video is not to make any political debates um, concerning the laws like what they should be or what they shouldn't be or express any opinions at all basically all I'm gonna do is just go over the pamphlet and explain what the laws are now <clears throat> I'm not sure whether these are available online maybe they are I'm sure they are but sometimes it's it, the information sticks when we actually hear someone read it to us or watch it on video rather than trying to read the text ourselves anyways uh, so I'm gonna go over the pamphlet go over all the this isn't all the laws regarding you know, concealed carry in Florida but it's basically a summary so here it is question and answers pertaining to the use of deadly force for lawful self-defense Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services Division of Licensing and Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services and they emphasize here a license to carry a concealed weapon is not a license to use it so hey I'm allowed to carry this but the the permit is for carrying the gun it's not a permit to go around pointing it exposing it shooting it wherever I feel like it that's why it's called concealed carry permit what kinds of weapons are included in the concealed weapons law the Jack Hagler Self-Defense Act defines concealed weapons or firearms as follows. Handguns, electronic weapons or devices, tear gas guns, knives, and billies. This pamphlet emphasizes handguns because they are one of the most commonly used weapons for self-defense. <clears throat> what if I am in my vehicle? A person has no duty to retreat in his lawfully occupied vehicle against a person who was in the process of unlawfully and forcefully entering or ha had unlawfully and forcefully entered an occupied vehicle or had unlawfully and forcefully removed or was attempting to remove another against that person's will from the occupied vehicle. In other words, if you are inside your own vehicle, you have no duty to retreat which means that you have a right to to defend yourself and you don't have to get out of your vehicle and try to run away because you're inside your own vehicle it'd be kinda hard to try to run out of your car when someone's trying to attack you while you're in it makes sense <clears throat> when is a handgun concealed the Florida legislature defines a concealed firearm as any firearm carried on or about a person in such a manner as to conceal it from the ordinary sight of another person. A person carrying a concealed firearm without a license is guilty of a felony of the third degree. The penalty for this offense is a prison term of up to five years. So, if you have the license, you have to have your gun concealed which means that no one can see the gun if you're caught carrying the gun and you don't have a license you can go to prison for five years are there special laws that apply to the use of handguns <clears throat> yes special laws apply anytime anyone uses deadly force whether or not the weapon is concealed Florida law defines deadly force as force that is likely to cause death or great bodily harm when you carry a gun, you possess a weapon of deadly force. The law 
considers even an unloaded gun to be a deadly weapon when it is pointed at someone. So basically a gun in and of itself if you use it in any threatening way even pointing it at someone is considered using deadly force. When can I use my handgun to protect myself? Florida law justifies use of deadly force when you are trying to protect yourself or another person from death or serious bodily harm, trying to prevent a forcible felony such as rape, robbery, burglary, or kidnapping, using or displaying a handgun in any other circumstances could result in your conviction for crimes such as improper exhibition of a firearm, assault, manslaughter, or worse. <clears throat> Example of the kind of attack that will not justify defending yourself with deadly force. Two neighbors got into a fight, and one of them tried to hit the other by swinging a garden hose. The neighbor who was being attacked with the hose shot the other in the chest. The court upheld his conviction for aggregated battery with a firearm because an attack with a garden hose is not the kind of violent assault that justifies responding with deadly force. So basically someone's attacking you with something that's not lethal you're not supposed to respond with something that is. What if someone uses threatening language to me so that I am afraid for my life or safety? Verbal threats are not enough to justify the use of deadly force. There must be an overt act by the person which indicates that he immediately intends to carry out the threat. The person threatened must reasonably believe that he will be killed or suffer serious bodily harm if he does not immediately take the life of his adversary. So, basically, if someone threatens to kill you, it's kind of like the principle of, you know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Don't take the words personally unless, unless you notice the guy is actually going to carry out his threat. Common sense there. <clears throat> what if someone is attacking me in my own home? The courts have created an exception to the duty to retreat called the Castle Doctrine. Under the Castle Doctrine, you need not retreat from your own home to avoid using deadly force against an assailant. The Castle Doctrine applies if you are attacked in your own home by an intruder or an invited, or an invited guest. So basically, the Castle Doctrine is if you're actually in your house and someone breaks in, you have a right to use deadly force. Because if someone breaks into your property, you can assume that they meant harm or intended to if they happen to see you. Uh, that's basically my opinion on that, or interpretation on that. <laughs> what if I'm in my place of business and someone comes in to rob me? Do I have to retreat before using deadly force? The Castle Doctrine also applies when you are in your place of business. If you are in danger or of death or great bodily harm, or you are trying to prevent a forcible felony, you do not have to retreat before using deadly force in self-defense. So the Castle Doctrine also applies in your business or work area. You don't have to run away from your work area if someone's threatening you. You can stand your ground and use deadly force to match deadly force. <clears throat> 